What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Caesar, and we are talking about others.d. This is the total crypto market cap um, dominance, excluding the top 10 coins. And I'll actually show you which coins those are. This is at the request of Mr. Hat, M Hat himself. I'll just pull it up on CoinGecko here. Let's just see. So the top 10 coins being, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum, of course. Then you've got Stablecoin with Tether, BNB. Solana, USDC, another stable coin, Lido staked Ether, it's essentially like stable coin for Ether, right? XRP, Tuncoin, and Dogecoin. So excluding those top 10 behemoths on the market cap scale for crypto, that's what this chart is, all right? So hit that like button, subscribe if you wanna see more, we're gonna go over it right now. In other words, or maybe the way to think of this chart, right, is if the dominance goes up in this chart, that means that the market cap relative to the top 10 coins, right? Relative to these coins here, the market cap of every other crypto is going up more than these ones. This going up does not mean that the top 10 coins and obviously excluding the stable coins, um, it doesn't mean that these coins are going down if this chart's going up. It just means that these coins are not keeping up with the pace of literally the rest of the market. So, um, that's that's essentially what this means. Okay, so let, let's get into this. Let's look at this here. Uh, I don't know how accurate or useful the volume might be, but we're just gonna we're, you know I mean, take it for what it is. But I, I don't know if I don't know if it's accurate or useful. Sometimes these uh, conglomerate charts can be a little bit skewed with the volume. I, I don't know why, but it just seems to happen. Uh, anyways, top to bottom here from the 2017 cycle, we had a little double bottom there in that COVID crash. Or no, is that that's not the COVID crash actually. The COVID crash was in May of 2020. I guess we did all right. Or what was it, March? It was March, I think, in 2020, actually. Anyways, uh, and we, we did drop from there. Anyways, top to bottom of this cycle, not the previous cycle, but the cycle beforehand, uh, we interacted with the 1414-1272 area, finding support at the 618, the golden ratio area. Yes, we wicked below it, but no, we did not close below it on a monthly basis. I think that's significant enough. Interacting with the 886-786 zone, it looks somewhat productive, I must say. So I would think that we continue onward. Um, my thoughts would be that we carry on to the 1618, therefore giving the majority of the uh, the crypto space. Right now we're at a 10.11% of the market cap value. I think that we will more than double that by the end of this cycle. Now, I doubt we linger there, right? These highs, you know, though they might not be like the last time we see them, we see them a few more times. They're very short lived when we interact with them, right? Um, until we break through it, obviously. So I would expect based off of this previous time that we might find some resistance at that 16 to 19% area for others.d. Um, but we will probably break through that. And I, I would think just based off the fibs, based on how I, how I use the fib uh, extensions and retracements, just the, the next target area would be the 23.13% area. Um, we could go a little bit past that. We might fall shy of that. I don't think we'd reach as high as 30%, certainly not 44%, but something like that makes sense to me. Um, if we're looking at this RSI here, the RSI is kind of neutral. Nothing really too exciting. The monthly RSI is always weird for me. I'm sure there's a better way to go about it, but it just, it changes so slowly. I, I don't think it looks bad, but it's relatively neutral. And that makes sense. We haven't really, yes, we've moved up and we've moved down, but really we've kind of stayed the same essentially since January of 2023. We're in the same area. So, uh, you know, just a little up and down, not, not a whole lot going on there. On a weekly basis, oversold and potentially bouncing off the oversold zone. Hey, that's a nice look there. That's a nice look, something like this. You know, I wonder, I mean, obviously if this goes up, others would go up too, right? Obviously it would, so I'm not actually gonna do that. Um, this this could mean that we're about to see a little bit of an alt cycle, right? And that makes sense. We just saw we just saw a dump across the market, across the board with a lot of different alt coins and the top 10 uh, included in that, um, at least the coins that aren't stable coins. I would assume that we are either at the low or very, very near it. And I actually want to see, based off of this, I'm, I like that RSI, I really do. I think it looks bad right now, but it's set up to look good. And we do bottom in these areas. This is a pretty shallow interaction with 
the oversold zone, but we've seen this kind of shallow interaction before and it, it promoted um, decent results afterwards. So I do wanna take this low to high here. Hit that like button, you guys. Subscribe if you haven't. Double top down to your 618, finding support, wicking, that's a, uh, what do they call that, a tweezer bottom. Um, you have interacted with the 0.5 and rejected. That's not necessarily an encouraging look that would prompt me to believe that you go down here, uh, but but to be fair, I mean you did you did bounce off the 618 zone again, so maybe that holds. We'll look at the daily and determine that. If we are moving up, the next you know kind of target would be 11%. This isn't the same as the others chart, right? We're at 10% now, 11%. That doesn't mean that the all, most of the crypto market, the altcoin market, is going to move up 1%. That's not what that means. It just means it's going to gain a percent in dominance um, relative to the top 10 coins. Oh, fun that was that was great man never done that before but i just it's okay you know you, you live you bleed you <laughs> you live and you learn or you don't you die anyways uh <laughs> don't don't worry about it guys i just i just scraped my knuckle a little bit there on my desk um but we're at 10 percent bouncing off the 618 zone maybe maybe i would think the next area would be 11 percent if this 9.68 area holds if we can hold that i want to look at the daily just to get a better look at that but hold on before we do that double come on now yeah i mean that would make sense yeah going above your 382 a little bit above it that that would make sense okay um i want to look at the daily to see if that looks right i don't like the daily rsi so much but it's not bad, right? I mean, it's neutral. It looks bad overall, but it is neutral right now with a bearish emphasis. It does kind of look like it wants to break above the 50, but at the same time, you've rejected it three times. I'm not, I'm not super confident on that. This does look like a nice double bottom, though. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you do move up from here. I am gonna say that. So I think that you are. We probably are going to see altcoins gain a percent relative to Bitcoin. Um, or more than a percent even relative to Bitcoin and the, the rest of the top 10. Um, we've actually even found support here at a previous, I meant to say this a second ago, but I got distracted by, <laughs> by, by hitting my hand there. Uh, let's see, you know, down at the bottom there, found support right here, kind of an area of resistance down here. Oh, it kind of, it almost looks like an inverse head and shoulders, doesn't it, M Hat? I wonder if that's what you're seeing there, my friend. I wonder if you, you're seeing that kind of, Kind of, but I, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't think you said that. I'm, I'm gonna just double check here. No, you did not say that. So maybe, maybe you're not looking at that. It kind of looks like it, but maybe not. It's like a slanted inverse head and shoulders, but it's not the prettiest pattern. But this isn't the most uh, standard chart either. I don't know. It looks. It looks good enough, in my opinion, for a for a low for an area that you would expect to find a low, and it is kind of in transition with these these uh, this ascending trend line here, right? The support line here. It's not the most respected, but more or less, right? Actually, it's pretty damn close, you know, pretty damn close. And actually, you don't need to interact with this line. A lot of people might might look at this and say, well, you do have to go down a little bit and touch that line. But this is actually, this is pretty common. This is what they call a, I think it's a partial decline, or maybe it's a partial incline. I think it is a partial decline. Um, and that's actually a very bullish setup where you reach for the line, you can't quite reach it because there's just so much buying pressure. Um, whether that's the case or it's a coincidence, who knows, but um, I would think that breaking above 12.3% would be significant. Maybe we should use a closing basis. Yeah, maybe 11.8% maybe this, this closing high here, because you seem to find support there a couple times. You found resistance there, resistance here a few times, obviously. So looking to break above 11.8%, we'll probably make a move again, just like 1% or maybe at the most like 1.8% up for now, and then see a little bit of a pullback or consolidation, something like that, right? I don't know if we're gonna reach all the way up for that line, probably something like this. Maybe we work our way up there, who knows? But then once that breaks, that could be the threshold that's necessary to break in order to send us up to our, our new all time highs. Inevitably, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. This is on a monthly basis. Um, oh man, but the way I have that drawn, it probably happens sooner than that. Right. Um, cause that would be in 2027 and I don't think it's going to take till 2027, something like that. Yeah. More or less. I don't know, man. Maybe we do just move straight up month after month. I don't know. We don't, we don't have a whole lot of time left in the cycle. So unless the cycle is going to be longer than a lot of people are calling for. A lot of people are assuming that the cycle is going to be short, right? That, that we're going to have a shorter cycle than normal. Um, or at least that it would end earlier in accordance, in response to the halving date. Normally we have the cycle last anywhere from like 
but basically around a year and a half, a year to a year and a half after the halving happens. Um, and that would put us sometime in like, like early 2025, but some people are calling for the cycle to end. May, sorry, not early 2025. I'm sorry. Uh, mid to late 2025 as early as like April, maybe in 2025, but I think it's going to end in late 2025. A lot of people are calling for this cycle to end either this year at the end of this year or in Q1, early Q2 of next year. I would wonder if we do actually see the cycle extend in time. And if we do, that would actually give us more time to see these, uh, these areas that I'm calling for, which is probably hold on that's not that's not where i was going from it was this one over here top to bottom probably around 23.13 percent even up to 25 percent man i don't know to me i think this looks fine i think it looks bullish the monthly rsi looks fine i think you know relatively speaking uh weekly rsi could look better but i mean maybe this is the bottom right it always looks it's worse at the bottom and the daily doesn't look the best it's re relatively neutral right now but that can change week to week and i mean all we have to do really is get above this area above 10.55 percent to see that next move up to about 11.10 percent or higher i feel like i didn't i wasn't the most well spoken in this video i don't know why but that's just how it is sometimes so Hit that like button, you guys. Subscribe if you want to see more. That's that's what I got. This chart is a little bit odd, but I know M Hat. You look at a bunch of different things. You look at you look at the market and different charts uh, on various spectrums. So it's good to look at these sometimes. You know, some some people might get more out of it than others. It kind of looks like a running flat. I don't know much about Elliott Wave theory, but I was looking into it a little bit, so it's fresh in my mind. I mean, if we go here, you go to Elliott Wave, right? Let's go. Where are we at here? Flat running, yeah, running flat. Uh, looks like this, right? It looks just like this. I don't know about the wave count. Let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. You got a zigzag, or not, that wouldn't be a zigzag there. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Wow. And then a one, two, three, one, two, dude, it is. It's a running flat, bro. You got a running flat up here. That's cool. And we are, we've broken out of it bullishly, which would imply that we're probably going to move. Yeah, we're probably going to move to new all-time highs because that's what this is, right? You've got your one, two, three down. I'll go over it. Okay, one, two, three down. One, two, three up. Sorry, hold on. One, two. I almost stopped it at that high, but three up. And then one, two, three, four, five down, right? And that's exactly what this is. Uh, one, two, three down. One, two, three down. One, two, three up, and it's larger than your A. Your B leg is larger than your A, and hey, it definitely is one, two, three up, B, right? And then one, two, three, four, five down. One, two, three, four, five down, and it's not as big as your B, but it's larger than your A. Yeah, I would say, I mean, pretty comparable, but still, I think that's a running flat, man. And you broke out of it bullishly, and you're back testing areas of resistance for support, back testing your 618 golden ratio area for support. This actually uh, could be a, a big setup, man. Maybe, maybe you're in the midst of something. This doesn't look like an impulse out, to be completely fair. I don't know. I don't know what this what this would be as far as like your next wave count goes, but I think I think properly identified this this actually is a running flat of sorts. So maybe look into that M hat. Look what comes after a uh, a running flat. And look bull market, bull market. That's what he gives the example. That's exactly what this is here. Hey, this looks like a bull to me. Looks like we're in a bull market with this thing overall, right? Moving up. So um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, little identification there of what that is. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's a coincidence. Who knows? But anyways, hit that like button, you guys. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.